back again with another video bad news brown now i'm gonna be doing open topic on this video i'm gonna be touching on a few things a few current events and hoping to shed a little light and give you a proper perspective on how to look at things as far as what's going on in this world and as well as learning the real from the fake and also how to filter the information that's being shot at you constantly from day to day so here I go now the first topic I'm probably gonna speak about what well, I am gonna speak on is the whole well Lord Jamar now Lord Jamar is being leading the fight on the whole notion that hip-hop was created through outside influence other than the black Americans which is not true so Again, Lord Jamar, what he currently did is issue a challenge to notable people, KRS-One, Fat Joe, Crazy Legs, and there's a few others in the hip-hop industry. And he's issuing them a challenge, as he put it, a cipher, which is basically like a circle, a cipher, and a, a sort of more or less like a debate, and everybody come with the facts, and let the best man win or like I always say let the truth the truth gonna win every argument and I want to put that out there because again just for, just so you'll know for those out there in YouTube world black Americans invented hip-hop it didn't have no outside influence yeah there was people from other cultures and segments that were around when it first got started but nevertheless it is a black thing and other groups adopted it although it may have been early on but they adopted it from us and bottom bottom line hands down so on to the next current topic we'll talk a little politics now so I guess Joe, Joe Biden President Biden or whatever ignored a young black I'm not sure if he was at an event or function or whatever and I guess it's a, a time when he come and shake the hands of the other people or the participants or whatever and when he comes to the to the black one he ignores her and what I gotta say about that y'all is that's just more proof that not only racism but the negligence of this country of its black citizens still exists I look at that as that that black kid that youth is basically all of us as a proxy especially when it comes to the Democratic Party I'll say that because they already been losing a black vote as they should and this is what I want to put out there when it comes to that well for one we as a people need to get in a position to whereas it really don't matter who's in office we we sub substantiated meaning that we we foolproof regardless even if it's a, a good economy a bad economy we basically got our own resources whether it comes to institutions I'm just gonna put it like that and it's more to it than that but the main point is don't be dependent on these politicians and for the politicians the burden of proof is on them same with the whole racism thing I don't look at everybody that's non-black or white as racist but again the burden of proof is on you now do I mean go out your way to kiss ass to prove you're not racist I ain't saying that but again the burden of proof is on y'all same as these politicians whether it be Democrat Republican they need to what are you gonna do for me for my vote and that's the way I recommend you look at this just like politicians all the time they got what we call special interest groups who give politicians money to their campaign and if that politician get in office he do what he promised so it tends it seems like when it comes to us our issues get pushed to the back burner or we get promised some type of constellation prize as I'll put it a, a statue or a holiday or a, a old acknowledgement or some sort of the past or you know nothing that's that's really tangible that's really gonna help us move forward as a group so again that Biden move he just did is more proof 
on how he really feel now I don't know I wasn't there I don't think it had nothing to do with his age if that's the case he would have skipped several people how come specifically when he gets to the African American youth he he forgets about that person so and that brings up another thing regarding politics I've been hearing about that whole project 2025 and I didn't I ain't looked too much into it. You know, I just heard a few things they throwing out, but regardless, the point is, this is just more proof that we as a whole need to position ourselves to not be victims of this. Whatever the case it may be, you gotta we gotta insulate ourselves to where it don't affect us that much. But if you riding on that ship, which is the Titanic. When it sink, you going to sink with it. I don't even care if you change seats on it. As you know, we, we so need to be focused on building that own ship. That way, regardless to what they doing, bad or good, it won't affect us like that entirely. So that whole Project 2025, whether it be true or not, it doesn't even matter. It's just more proof, again, like I said, to... Position yourself so where you insulated from a lot of these politic economic tricks and whams and whims that they're running on us. If not, you're going we're gonna always be a victim. So now, next subject I want to speak about, and this has just been currently I've been hearing about. It. Somebody actually asked me about this too. And I guess it's a little controversy, not really too much, so I don't really want to put it like that. But it's regarding a little bit of L.A. street politics as far as is Compton, L.A. And, of course, if you're from that area, you already know the real. But I've been seeing a lot of, a lot of it on the timeline or whatnot. And, again, my partner of mine asked me about that. So I want to speak on it and really put it in a perspective from people that's not from the LA area, in particular my area or any other area abroad as far as what's going on in, in the landscape of LA from an outsider. So let me break that down real quick. Well for one, growing up when you hear about LA, Hollywood, Compton, South Central, Long Beach, whether from NWA or all that, when I was younger, I just figured L.A. was one big city, and those are just different parts of L.A., kind of like New York City when they got the boroughs, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, and all that. I just figured, okay, well, L.A., they got Compton, South Central, Long Beach, etc. Now, as I got a little older, and actually when I went down to L.A. as well, because I got family from Compton, and you can actually see, because again, L.A. is real big, y'all, so... L.A. is a county as well as you got L.A. County then you also have the city of Los Angeles so that'd be confusing for some people it was a little confusing for me at first like even when you hear Hollywood I just thought of those as different sections of Los Angeles but truth is those are cities in Los Angeles County so Hollywood is its own city has its own police department on your ID, it's going to say Hollywood, California. Same with Compton. It's going to say Compton, California. Inglewood, Inglewood, California. Pomona, all that. Long Beach. Now, South Central is actually in the city of Los Angeles. Same as Watts. Those are sections in the city of Los Angeles. In the South, they call it South Central. And it's some more controversy on that. Because I just heard recently heard that that whole name was was deemed to kind of on some redlining restriction to the to the black citizens in L.A. and they just called it South Central, but to put a bad moniker on it. But that's a different story. But that's a good history lesson. But anyway, so Watts, that's in Los Angeles. South Central, that's in Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles. So. I guess what's been going on is, I guess some Compton, somebody from Compton, I guess, allegedly is saying that, hey, Compton is not in L.A. Or, I guess, the guys from the city of Los Angeles, and I ain't saying everybody, of course, but from online, 
we got a lot of guys from the city of LA I guess they feeling they feeling some type of way figuring cats from other parts of LA County is feeling some type of way I guess now because when they doing interviews or whatever they put the emphasis on a city as opposed to just saying LA because it's all in LA County but there are different cities so that's a little interesting so for people that ain't from LA just like like me I'm from the Bay now if you're from the Bay you just kind of look at LA as like the whole San Francisco Bay area so that just kind of look like if they just call the whole Bay San Francisco then you got the city of San Francisco just like we do in the same cities we got it's just our own city but we would be in Frisco County that's how LA got it going on down there to whereas you got LA County which is big as hell then you got the city of Los Angeles and then of course you got Inglewood, Compton, Long Beach, Pomona's, the San Pedro's, the Linwoods, all those, those are our cities, cities in LA County. So I just want to kind of clear that up for people that ain't from LA that may be hearing a lot of that going back and forth online or whatnot. So and it's again, I figured this out, even meeting people in prison, going to jail. I remember I met one cat before I really realized, you know, right from, from L.A. I'm like, okay, what part, you know, Compton wise, you know, I'm from L.A., like the city of L.A. And that's when it kind of like hit home for me. You know, I kind of knew that I already been in L.A. a few times, but it still didn't really hit home until we said it like that. Like, no, I'm from L.A. And also another thing that kind of rung a bell just on the side note regarding that and I mentioned this in a prior video when I was doing Tommy Quentin reception and I had the Feds magazine circulating and I read the whole Suge Knight article and he was kind of throwing shade on Snoop in that article and he was kind of like Snoop ain't from the hood he from Long Beach and I'm thinking I'm reading I'm like like what ain't that in LA too like I didn't understand it then and then so I guess and don't get me wrong I met a lot of cats at the time with cats from Long Beach that was solid, but I guess, man, it should was probably just saying that just to throw shade, but I guess if you from L.A., Los Angeles, even though Shug is from Compton, so I don't know, he was just saying that, but I kind of figured that I guess from L.A., South Central, Wisecat, them cities, you know, they go down, but they, they ain't the main man, and I think that's probably what a lot of that back and forth between them is going through anyway but anyway I just want to say as far as that man ain't no no black on black man it's it's all good it's, we got bigger problems bigger fish to fry and y'all already know that I ain't getting into issues like politics that really was more as a, a geographic lesson for y'all that don't know about the whole LA area and this brings up another thing y'all on, on a side note a side issue or whatever I was watching an interview with Willie D conversations y'all check this out this interview with Kid and Play, and they mentioned that the city that they filmed House Party in the movie, it was never named, and the directors didn't name what city they was in because they just wanted everybody from every city to relate to it, and I kind of want to speak on that because House Party 1, they was in Cleveland, and Robin Harris, his character even said it in the movie that they was in Cleveland and also there's another scene in House Party 1 when Kid and Play they was talking on the phone he like I need you to be here on CPT I took that as Cleveland people time so maybe I could be wrong but House Party 1 was Cleveland House Party 2 I believe probably was in that area because they was away in college and he was kind of back and forth so they had to be not far from where they originally was from in the movie which was Cleveland and then part three was definitely in LA yeah, that's why you can you justify the new cast he getting married they grown they moved away they was in LA for sure but that's so that's what I believed now of course in that interview they said the director didn't and they didn't specifically go out the way to name a certain city so they wasn't lying but at the same time, in part one, they said Cleveland. And lastly, R.I.P. to Kyrie Jackson.
Unfortunately, Kyrie Jackson, rookie for the Minnesota Vikings, died in an auto accident. So my condolences to his family. And I just want everybody to be careful out there. Them car accidents ain't no joke. I was just in an auto accident the other day, actually. And, man, life is short out there, man. Y'all already know. Or do we know? But don't take life for granted, man. And just RIP to that young brother, man. Just bad news, Brown, breaking it down for y'all, man. Touching up on a few current events, hot topics. Y'all go ahead and subscribe to me. I'll be back at y'all in a minute. Peace.